Hey guys, it's Luke here. Um, I'm going to update you on the 2.2 kilowatt monster. Um, it's up and running, kinda. Um, so today, I've spent most of my day in the workshop and I've been building a, a monster enclosure. As you can see, it's a pretty chunky monkey. Um, I've made it 60 odd centimetres high to accommodate for a little bit extra room in the z-axis. It also helps me if I want to upgrade that bit at any point later on. Um, I should be covered. It's still a work in progress. I've only got the lights in it. I haven't got my uh, gas lifts yet. Uh, the ones I had were only rated for 80 newton meters, and that wasn't going to um, that wasn't going to hack it since it struggled before. So I'm just using a, a trusty spirit level there, as you can see, to hold it up. Probably not ideal, but you know, whatever. Now, I've got the VFD installed, as you can see it just over there. I've got a laptop set up. I've got a little water tank as well, and. I've also got the uh, Shapiko, which has been rewired. I'm going to have a little look at all that. So to start off with, look at all that lovely space we've got on the Z. I mean, we can go absolutely to town on that. We can go up, down. And it's got plenty of room to move. You notice that at the moment, you know, it's not at the bottom of its mount. It can be, still be moved up slightly. So if you were milling something a little bit larger, you can still get a, a decent size end mill under, the, under there. Now, I have doubled up the springs on the Z, and that's because the replacement springs I ordered from Amazon were you know, pretty useless, to be honest. They weren't very good for anything. So, as a quick jog test, let's move it around a little bit. So we'll move a spindle. I mean, it's all loaded up, all about six kilos of it. That's a bit of rapid jogging. You can see it's coping with that real nice and easy. Um, I haven't been able to mill anything with it yet because I haven't got any collets for any of my work pieces, the one they supplied. So um, look at that, it's an ER20, but it's a, a six to five, uh, or five to six, I don't know you can see that. So um, I haven't got any bits that fits that, so we won't use it at the moment. But as you can see, it moves nice and easy. Uh, I'm not really too worried about that. I am loving the new, uh, newer height on the Z. So, what else have we got here? We've also got ourselves a nice water tank. So, just to walk you through, it is a water-cooled spindle. I'll tell you a bit about this. All it did, they give you some sort of weird uh, pond pump, I think it is. And, you know, it's a 240 or 110 volt, wherever you are. And essentially it just recycles it. So what I did, I got a nice four point something litre uh, lock and lock container for a seven quid off Amazon. Put a nice little notch just there in the corners, let the wire go out. Put a couple of rubber bungs there and then I fed the tube in. Now at the moment I haven't put the water cooling in yet. Just because I'm still playing with a few bits and pieces. Um, but to be honest I can probably do that real nice and quick. Show you in action. I'll just click the power socket. And there you can see it's just turning on recycling the water. Now, because I'm a little bit childish, um, what I did, I put a bit of blue uh, dye in the water just to make it look a little bit cool and a bit more well, sci-fi. I've also added some central heating protector. I don't know if you can get it in the States, but loads of it in the UK. And just put a little dribble of this in there uh, just to ensure it protects all the metal or stops rust, etc just in case. Now I'm going to turn that off. We'll have a look at the VFD and probably a more interesting thing. I'll just pull it out of the way actually. Now here's the VFD. Um, as standard it doesn't come with a pot on it to control speed and you have to control it through frequency which to be honest was just crazy so um, I went on to Amazon yesterday or last night and ordered some pots and I fitted one today I found some pretty good instructions online um, but very simply you know your free your, your sort of third pin in your pot goes to the 10 volt pin two goes to your VI pin and then one goes to your ACM uh, so I found those instructions pretty useful now to start it, there's loads of different settings you can play with, um, but for me, you know, what I've just done is if I just click run at the moment, it will start it. 
if the, the pot's got a you know, speed associated to it. The moment that's off, so it won't do anything. But we will see what that does in a second. Um, it's pretty cool, because it's incredibly quiet. So, you won't be able to see both easily. There we go. Let's bring that to the front as well. A bit rapid position. Yeah, power. I'll bring it right up the front so you can see it all. Not there's a lot to see. Now if I turn the dial ever so slightly. You can see we're running at around about 600 RPM. Nice and slow. And it's got a bit of a squeal to it. I should also mention you're not meant to run a water-cooled spindle without the water pumping through. I am. I don't know why. I'll turn it up and grease it. That's about two and a half thousand RPM. Now you can easily hear me talking at the same time that's going, which is mental when you think about it compared to the DeWalt. Four thousand odd RPM. Still, easy to hear me. Six thousand RPM. You can still hear me. Now, that's really weird because it's getting quieter as it goes faster. 11,000 RPM, so setting one to two on your DeWalt. And now it's almost 16,000 RPM. Still hear me, easy. Now, it sounds a bit like a spaceship. But we're going at 2,400 RPM. As you can see, we can just turn it down and I'll click stop. Now, whilst that shuts up, as you can see, it's getting a bit more of an industrial setup now. I've got more wires than I should probably have there. Um, I've still got my um, uh, start and stop going through uh, a plug socket just there. Um, and that was for the DeWalt. Now, I'm not 100% sure how to start the, um, uh, the, route, the router, the, router the, the spindle, using the automatic start. I tried wiring up my, I think it's the D11 pin and my ground pin, uh, like I do to my relay for the uh, main spindle, and it's not working. Now, I've got a feeling I need to still use a relay with it because it's actually a switch. You know, I plugged in a switch into the two pins that you're meant to on the, on the spindle board or the, the VFD, and it worked fine. Um, so I reckon it's a case of uh, using a relay there and it was going to turn it on and off real quick which will give it a speed reading. Um, it just seems like a bit of a strange way of doing it, but who am I to, to judge that, hey? Um, the next thing I've got to do is put in some windows into my enclosure again. Um, but I just want to pop them down. As you can see there, um, I put in two nice large windows so you can see your jobs a bit better. Now I would have gone for one big window, but my old enclosure, I had two pieces of purse black, purse packs, whatever it's called, so it seemed like a waste. Anyway, um, next steps, windows in. I'm gonna sort out the, uh, the wiring. I'm gonna do a test run. Uh, hopefully we'll get some collets. Hopefully tomorrow I'm gonna to mill some wood or something, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Hope that's been useful, and enjoy yourselves. Cheers.